Hello everyone, welcome to the daily newspaper analysis of the Shankar AS Academy brought to you by the Civil Speedia team. This video is for the current affairs of the date 19 September 2024. The topics for discussion are as follows. The first article discusses about the Indus Water Treaty, the Permanent Indus Commission and the uh, negotiations between the country India and Pakistan when it comes to the Indus river system and this article is from the Hindu. Next, next article talks about the milestone which should be soon achieved by our country India by the approval of initiating the Chandrayaan 4, the Venus orbiter and Gaganyaan expansion as these space machines are uh, gets the approval from the union cabinet. And this article is from the Hindu again. And the last article talks the different discourses when it comes to Article 370 of the Jammu and Kashmir and their cancellation and their or their revocation as uh, Jammu and Kashmir is heading towards their elections. And this article is from the Indian Express. So without any much further delay, let's get into the articles discussion one by one. Now moving to the article, India has decided to freeze the meetings of Permanent Indus Commission that is the PIC uh, with the Pakistan on Indus waters until both the governments negotiate the 1960 Indus Water Treaty. Uh, since January 2023, India has almost sent four requests regarding the revise of this Indus Water Treaty to Pakistan con uh, for concerns like environment, population increase and at the same time cross-border terrorism and so on. But there has been no any satisfactory response from the Pakistan. So in light of this article, let us see the key topics which can be discussed through. Let us see what is Indo Water Treaty is. Indus Water Treaty an agreement signed by the Pakistan and India on September 19, 1960 in regard the use and distribution of the uh, Indus river system. Uh, for this treaty, the Ga World Bank acts as the guarantor that is uh, someone who knows that an event is happening or not or someone acts as a witness. So here the Indus river system consists of six water rivers which is the Indus, Jhelum and Chenab where these three rivers are known as the western rivers. Here these western rivers are primarily allocated to the uh, Pakistan country whereas the eastern rivers called the Ravi, Bees and Satluj are totally allocated to country India. Here for western rivers India is limited to use the water only for non-consumptive uses that is uh, such as uses like elect uh, power generation, agriculture and other domestic uses. Here in non-consumptive system the water level cannot be degraded as much as to the lowest level. Therefore, the wa water table should be revised or the water table should be increased or water table should be charged when it comes to non-conceptive uses. Can, uh, here the downstream people need the water for their uses whereas in consumptive uses the water table uh, doesn't have the requirement to be flourished or doesn't have the requirement to be increased or charged whereas the people downstream uh, does need to have the water. So these are the differences between non-consumptive uses versus the consumptive uses. Now any dispute when it comes to the Indus Water Treaty will be addressed by the commission called the Permanent Indus Commission where it is an initial forum for, the, for resolving any disputes when it comes to the Indus river system. Uh, if that has not found any solution to it or if the uh, PIC fails to you know resolve any disputes it can be moved to a neutral expert or a court of uh, arbitration such as the World Bank. Now let us see what are the current disagreements when it comes to the Indus Water Treaty. First is the dem uh, demographic changes. So uh, India argues that since 1960 the demand for water has been significantly increased for us. Here India argues this increased water location will help to address the population growth. Thus when there is such a limitation when it comes to the uh, river allocation, it constrains the demographic growth of India as a country and for its population. Next is the environmental concerns here. So here India has been focusing on hydro water power generation and other clean energy programs. So due to the restrictions when it comes to the western rivers such as the uh, non-consumptive uses, it harnesses the aim of uh, India to have sustainable energy programs. Next is one of the most important 
uh, disagreement which is the cross border terrorism uh, so according to india pakistan has been supporting cross border terrorism which brings in tensions where it has an impact to hinder the cooperation between the two countries uh, security of the people and at the same time it can also influence a lot of project implementation through the fund support and finally is the uh, dispute resolution india seeks to streamline the dispute resolution process where sometimes pakistan uh, delays or stalls hydro projects and due to this stalling of projects it tries to seek international arbitrations where according to india the resolutions are biased sometimes so having a very streamlined dispute resolution process where both the stakeholders that is india and pakistan are involved in peace conversation or peace communication and so on then only there would be a proper confrontation of both the problems by both the countries and try to have a, a fair resolution now let us see facts about the pic that is the permanent indus commission established under the indus water treaty pic is a bilateral commission where it involves both countries commissioners the commission's mandate is to uh, resolve disputes and in engaging in managing the water sharing where the commission have to meet at least once in a year uh, even during a period of a lot of period of conflict the commission have made sure that there is a regular meetings conducted before 2022 but since uh, the last meeting was on may 2022 and with no further talks since january 2023 now the question of the 1960s uh, indus water treaty is in doubt so i hope that has been a clear understanding on the pic the indus water treaty now let us move on to a mcq which of the following is an eastern river under the indus water treaty where it is fully allocated to india uh, river indus b option b ravi option c chenab and option d jhelum the question is pretty simple the answer is option b ravi here option a can be bit confusing as it is indus water indus river system which has been divided into western and eastern water rivers so option of us selecting indus can be an option so this is also seen as a trap by the upsc so now let us move on to the next article now moving on to the next article as the jammu and kashmir are heading towards their polls or the elections uh, this article talks about different discourses by the different parties on how they view the article 370 and how this uh, cancellation of article 370 have impacted the uh, jammu and kashmir so in light of this article let us have a detailed analysis on what the article 370 is about so uh, after 1947 uh, jammu and kashmir have seen significant changes through transformation and consolidation where uh, it was prone to a lot of political constraints uh conflicts and effort to integrate with the indian union now let us look into the history of accession and the autonomy of uh, jammu and kashmir so um, at the time of the independence which is in 1947 the princely state were given option to integrate with india or pakistan during the partition or remain independent uh, the maharaja hari singh of the jammu and kashmir initially wanted to have independence or remain independent from india and pakistan but uh, due to the tribal invasion uh, by the pakistan militants during october 1947 in jammu and kashmir uh, made hari singh to seek india's military assistance so due to this the instrument of accession was signed on october 26 1947 the instrument of uh, accession was signed with india by the jammu and kashmir so this accession that is this agreement made sure that uh, the defense foreign affairs and other communications are handled by the country india whereas the other issues are uh, handled by the jammu and kashmir so af after the maharaja's accession indian troops were elected to repel the invaders of the pakistan militants therefore this led to the first indo pakistan war in 1948 india took the matter to the un and un mediated uh, uh, which broke it to bring a cease fire where there was establishment of loc or the line of control so so in 1949 after the line of control been uh, created uh, the it divided the jammu and kashmir with pakistan administering a part of the region which is the azad kashmir and kilgit baltistan so this is the uh, map of the jammu and kashmir during 1949
where this is the line of control and this side of Jammu and Kashmir is known as the Tilchit Balistan and this side is known as the Azad Kashmir where it is both administered by the Pakistan after the establishment of LOC. Thus, this LOC doesn't give any importance to the special status when it comes to JNK. Now, let us look into the uh, special status and Article 370 of 1950 and what does it contain? The Article 370 which was guaranteed to Jammu and Kashmir as having a special uh, autonomy in 1950, it acted as an autonomous status where it allowed to have its own uh, constitution but where the Indian parliament can legislate on limited matters. That is, we did see the which are the matters such as defense, uh, foreign affairs and other communications. Here, the role of Sheikh Abdullah's a uh, very popular Kashmiri leader uh, who was the Prime Minister of Jammu and Kashmir made an impact. He supported the accession but he uh, advocated for more autonomy. Thus, because of this, uh, the relationship between Sheikh Abdullah and India had been deteriorated. So, as I said before, when it comes to the provisions of Article 370, the state had its own autonomy status. Here, the Indian Parliament could legislate on defense, foreign affairs and communications. And for the other matters, the states uh, concerned were required such as uh, having their own laws on residency, property rights and governance through Article 335A. Here in uh, Jammu and Kashmir, the constitutional amendments and emergency provisions are not automatically applicable without the state's intervention or without the state's approval. Now, looking at the abrogation of Article 370, abrogation is nothing but the cancellation. On August 5, 2019, the Indian government had cancelled the Article 370, that is the special status uh, of the Jammu and Kashmir and it has been reorganized into two union territories. Thus, the Jammu and Kashmir has been divided into union territories such as the Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh. Here, the, Jammu, the union territory of Jammu and Kashmir has legislated assembly where the Ladakh doesn't have one. So, the, uh, these are the important details when it comes to the article 370. Now, let us have a look on the MCQ related to it. Which of the following is not the indigenous people of Jammu and Kashmir? The Gujars and Bakarwas, the Chakmas, the Darshins or the Kurumas? The correct option is option D. So, the Kurumas are part of Vayanad where they are traditional farmers and herders. Now, moving on to the last set of news. And another milestone by our country India, the Chandrayaan 4 Venus orbiter gets the approval from the Union Cabinet in order to boost India's space programs. Chandrayaan 4 mission to bring the moon rocks to the Earth, uh, Venus orbiter, a spacecraft will be sent to orbit Venus and Gaganyaan expansion uh, where there is plans to build Indian spacecraft station under Bharatiya Antariksh Station Project that is the BAS. So, in light of this article, let us have a look on the uh, properties of the Chandrayaan 4. After the success of the Chandrayaan 3, uh, India's ambitious project of Chandrayaan 4 has been initiated which is to bring the lunar samples back to the earth. So, the major difference when it comes to Chandrayaan 3 and Chandrayaan 4 is where the Chandrayaan 3 uses three components that is the lander, rover and propulsion module whereas the Chandrayaan 4 uses five components in order to bring the lunar samples to the earth. So, if India is successful, India aims to join the elite club of nations that have been achieved this feat which is the uh, India would be joining Russia, USA and China. Now, let us look at the key objectives of the Chandrayaan 4. The first objective is to have a achieve a very safe landing on the moon or achieve a smooth landing on the moon. Next is the collection of the lunar rock or the moon rocks and their soil samples for scientific configurations. Next objective is a smooth takeoff from the lunar surface or the moon surface. Next is the docking and undocking in the lunar orbit. Docking and undocking is nothing but the joining or the uh, repulsion of two or more space machines. Next is the transfer of samples between the uh, spacecraft modules and finally is to return the collected samples to the earth. So, the Chandrayaan 4 has uh, five mission components. First is the propulsion system where it carries the lander and ascender to the moon. The next component is the descender that is nothing but landing on the moon and to collect the samples. Whereas, the third 
component is the ascender where ascender is nothing but the lif lifting of the uh, space machines from the moon along with the samples. Thus, here the propulsion system uh, com uh, comprises of all the lander, the ascender and the descender. Next is the transfer module. Here there is transferring of samples from the ascender to the re-entry module. Re-entry and the last component is the re-entry module which is nothing but the return of the lunar samples to the earth safely. So, comparing it to uh, Chandrayaan 3, Chandrayaan 4 has three more extra components which make sure that the samples has been safely provided to the earth without any hindrance. So, in Chandrayaan 4, there will be dual rocket launch. There will be two rockets used. First is the launch of vehicle Mark 3, LMV 3. Here, it carries the propulsion, propulsion, descender and ascender. Next is the polar satellite launch vehicle that is the PSLV. Here, it transports the transfer and re-entry modules. So, totally, the dual rod, uh, rocket launch has all the five components. Here the uh, PSLV earlier launch is expected by 2028. Next is the usage of advanced technology called PADEX that is nothing but the space docking experiment. Here the uh, successfulness of this mission depends totally on the docking of the ascender and the uh, transfer module in the lunar or uh, orbit. So this will be tested through the PADEX. It is nothing but the uh, test the docking technologies where uh, it is crucial for the Chandrayaan 4. With these advanced technologies, it tries to demonstrate India's capabilities when it comes to the future space missions of India. So, moving on to the MCQ, which of the following is not a component of Chandrayaan 3? Op uh, the options are lander, rover, orbiter and propulsion module. Uh, the correct answer is option C. As we have seen, Chandrayaan 3 uh, includes only three components which is the lander, rover and propulsion module. Thank you for watching this video. Do not forget to give a like, comment and a share and to further not to miss any other contents, subscribe to our channel. Thank you and have a great day.